All right, so we're just going to do a quick little overview of what I'm going to and what I'm running and why. So started with an S257 or S256, whatever it's called, with a .83 AR housing or whatever the standard thing is everybody does. Super laggy, big heavy 4x4, not going to happen. This is built, it's got forged rods, it's got stronger pistons, new valves. I'm not scared of back pressure uh, to an extent. So <clears throat> I decided I would go the VNT route. I have a TDI swapped XJ. It has a little tiny VNT on it. Works great. Stock, right? So I figured the same thing could apply here, but with a bigger 3 liter turbo, maybe a little oversized just to get some more flow up top because the TDI is all down low and this engine likes to flow. But I need to have boost on the system around 2,000 RPM so this thing doesn't sound like an absolute turd running. Um, so this is the John Deere tractor turbo that everybody infamous, infamously runs. I'll give you a little preview of the tags since no one ever does that. And it is the 050AJ oh, five, oh, housing. You can identify these with 050Y oh, or whatever in this. Um, works great. I got it. Unfortunately, it was a little damaged. Uh, basically, this was dropped in shipping. So I had to weld the housing together, and it, it's been fine. It's... In my opinion, this exhaust housing is massive. This is meant for a 9-liter uh, tractor engine. Uh, this is a 3-liter engine, so it's just, it's a little laggy. Uh, if you really close the veins down, you can get it to produce boost as low as 2,000 RPM and have like about 10 PSI. But because of the vein design uh, for this style turbo, when your veins are closed, your vein opening where the vein is like dumping exhaust gases at is very far away physically from the exhaust impeller or whatever you want to call it. So uh, that and then the size of the turbo, it just doesn't seem to be conducive. And then additionally, I thought it was cool at the beginning, but once I felt it, I realized it was a problem. Uh, the inlet compressor wheel is titanium, and I'll have a video with this opened up later. Um, but, you know, the titanium compressor wheel is probably because on a tractor, you're getting crap sucked into the motor. Um, and you don't want to tear up your wheel. I mean, literally blades of grass will tear up an aluminum compressor wheel. So they went with titanium and it's very heavy and it shows because if you rev this engine very slowly, you'll get boost at much lower RPMs. Uh, but if you quickly rev through the rev range, like you're supposed to in a vehicle, not a tractor, um, it just doesn't keep up. It's, it induces lag that would otherwise not be there. Uh, but for those of you interested, here's how I've been controlling it. Put a little hole in the stock arm. This is a uh, gate that pushes open whenever it gets pr pressure in it. <clears throat> Sorry, I have the hiccups. Uh, tried exhaust back pressure. It was fine. Uh, then I went to boost. It was a lot better. And then I put the boost to an actuator. Works way better. I'm talking like 45 PSI better. I have to dial it back. Um, if you start with the veins super closed, you get tons of back pressure and you get boost early, but boost isn't always good. You have to have low back pressure to have boost to an extent. So you'll notice that if you open the veins up a little bit, you get better bottom end and it lets you get moving to get boost going and you end up having more motion with less boost, if that makes sense. So that brings me to this guy. So this is a uh, HE300VG, focus, HE300VG off of a uh, 6.7 Cummins. Um, this is a 2013 and up turbo. This one was off of a 2018. Supposedly it only has 40 or 50,000 miles on it. Um, it's got some oil in here. I'm assuming it's from the crankcase breather that goes in here. That's literally just a straight pipe. Um, so I'm assuming it's the crankcase breather. So I think this turbo is good to go. It seems fine. Um, there's not crazy play. It spins freely. It'll work. This was literally a quarter of the price of that turbo uh, because I bought this used. And technically when I received that, it was used. So um, I think this will work better for a couple of reasons. First off, the exhaust housing physically is smaller. The opening is a little smaller, and some people might say, oh, well, it's going to flow less, but 
uh, you have this thing with the header where it's T3 and then it goes out to T4 and the T4 on this is massive. And then like even on the T4 on that John Deere turbo, it opens up inside even bigger. So I'm going from a small to a big back down to small and it's just, I think it's too much. So um, we're going to do a T3 adapter to this. I'm probably going to make it because um, this is a T4i style uh, turbo flange. T4 is more standard. T4i is like specific to these apparently. So I think this is going to work better because it's got a smaller housing here. It's got a little bit bigger of a compressor housing, I think. I mean, a little bit bigger. Maybe not crazy bigger, but a little bit bigger. So maybe it'll flow air a little easier on this side. I don't know. The whole big frame, small frame turbo thing is a whole discussion of itself. But um, the real reason I think this will work better is because these veins work like so. So those veins push in and out of these little slits. And what you end up with is a little gap that opens and closes to shoot the air or exhaust gases at, come on phone, focus, at the square section on each blade. So, you know, you can only open it up like eight millimeter to the tip of this blade. Anything past that is just bleeding pressure off, which is fine. We need to be able to do that in the 606. But this engine has the capability of closing that, you know, shoving it out, you're coming into this plate, closing it completely, um, which is pretty cool because, <clears throat> long story short, the 6.7 would shove this all the way out as an engine brake, and then when they're trying to get boost flowing, they're probably running it 40% open because it's a big engine. So anything under like 30% or 40% or whatever would be considered engine braking, so for us using a smaller engine, we can close the veins more to get it to spool hopefully similarly to the 6.7, but on a three liter turbo, but still have the ability to open up to bleed exhaust pressure off when we get up into the RPMs. That's the theory. Um, there's a lot of guys who have ran the HE 341 and 351, very reputable guys, and everybody's pointing in this direction, so I'm going to try it. I'm, I think I'm the first person to do this with the HE300 VG. So um, that's my working theory. I'm going to control this the same way. I'm not even going to use the water passages because no electronics. I'm going to do a wastegate actuator on this thing. Um, fun fact, you can clock this little arm this way if you want to do a screw inside the turbo. Um, so I'll do that and I'll try to show you guys how I do that and then I'll make a little bracket that holds an actuator. Uh, I was worried that this whole thing was not going to be clockable because uh, the housing is pinned. There's a pinhole here and on the compressor side there's a pin... I don't know where it's at but there's a pin. So they try to clock this to that, and that's probably just for the 6.7. There's obviously nothing keeping you from rotating this. I was worried that the veins would keep me from rotating the this, this center cartridge in this, but actually, this will spin freely wherever you clock the turbo to. And there's nothing pinning this. There's nothing pinning that. So that means I can loosely set these clamps up between the housings and clock it however I want. And that is important because... This is going to have to sit at a goofy angle to bolt to that turbo. In the stock form, this bolts at a 90 degree to the right, and then this flat surface hangs perfectly up and down this way. So if you picture oil coming in from the top and then draining out the bottom, when you go to tilt this like we will on the 606, oil would be coming in at an angle and then not draining directly out, and that can cause back pressure issues. But since this is completely clockable and these spin with the veins, I can get it position perfectly up and down 90 and then I can rotate this to wherever that outlet makes sense um, Quick little run through so I do plan to ditch the silencer ring in this because I want to hear fun sounds uh, Not that that really affects anything in reality, but I know what I like uh, Let's see Yeah, I mean it's honestly not crazy. It's much lighter like if you grab this and just like go back and forth to feel the weight, it's so much significantly lighter 
than that. Uh, I think that the outlet and the inlet are almost exactly the same. I'll do caliper measurements between this and that. And I did do caliper measurements between that and the S256 or 57, whatever it's called. Um, so we can compare the three mathematically or whatever to each other. Uh, but I do believe that this center cartridge is very, very, very similar to what is in that John Deere turbo minus the titanium compressor wheel. And I'm sure there's a different profile here. And keep in mind, this is, <laughs> this is a whole set off of a 6.7. And this is a Borg Warner off of a John Deere tractor. Okay, two very different brands. So I'm not trying to suggest that they're exactly the same. I know it's different manufacturers. I'm just saying that the geometry looks and feels very similar. So it'll be interesting to have numbers to compare. But this feels significantly lighter. This seems significantly more straightforward and a little smaller, less wasteful. The veins having this correct geometry where you have this perfect angle pointing towards the fins all the time rather than having the veins swing in and out like this, like you do in the whole, or the Borg Warner, or even Garrett does that too. Um, I think having this exact angle, but closed down, will spool this quicker. I really do. And, um, you know, I didn't want to buy a brand new turbo because I have a feeling that this won't be the last turbo I put on this engine, but if it does what I want it to do and I get about 10, 12 pounds by 2,000 RPM, um, then I'm happy. So yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, I'm not going to use this actuator, at least not in the beginning. I might try it later just for fun. So I'm going to try to not modify this too crazy, but, um, I think this is just going to be more of a headache and this seems to work pretty well on that already. So, uh, I get that like with the controller, you can do crazy stuff like start with it open get yourself moving and then close it down real quick to spool up and then open it back up since the turbine's already spinning. But uh, I just don't have the ability to do that. And let's be real, we're all running an OM606 for simplicity, even though I seem to be overcomplicating it a lot. But, um, you know, if you're going in a 4x4, you want good power and you want it to come on early um, in a pre-chamber diesel a very rare one at that. You got to experiment and figure stuff out for yourself. So here we are. Um, I have an adapter on this. that's like a 45 degree that goes from T3 to T4 to mount this. I'm going to have to pull this off. I'm going to try to make just a straight flat adapter plate, maybe clocking or something on it uh, to mount that turbo to this exhaust manifold and I have a feeling that because the compressor housing on that is so much bigger than this I have a feeling it's going to get into my fuse box and maybe even this reservoir for my radiators so I have no idea where I'm gonna put those there is room down here the wires just are not long enough and I want to be able to get to them I would prefer to not move this this is in a great position um so yeah I'll take you guys along for the ride for this. Uh, I have some pretty good videos of how this runs and drives. I documented it pretty good today. This turbo is still in pretty good shape. I uh, just, I think I'm growing on from it. So uh, we're going to try this out. See where we, see where we get. Till next time.